Hello, it's Leanne here and today I'm down in the worm farm area where I run three worm farms and today I've spent a couple of hours harvesting from one of the trays. That's the neighbour's dog, Matilda's not barking by the way. And I've harvested some castings so let's take a look at it. First off we've got this beautiful bin, bucket, bin, bucket and in it is a whole pile of castings. So what's going to happen is I'm going to put one of the children's flannelette nappies that I've kept. Because back when they were little, we didn't really have disposable nappies. So I'll wet it down. It'll go on top and it'll keep it nice and damp. In a couple of weeks, I'll put half a banana in there. I'll just cut it in half, pop it in there. And the worms are going to be hungry. So what will happen then is they'll come up and it's called worm baiting. And then I can look and say, OK, there's a handful of worms or there's three worms or whatever and I can take them out and put them back in the farms this is going into my garden this is black gold that is Matilda barking now we will ignore her please anyway so what will happen is I'll use that in under the mulch because if the sun gets to it it'll kill the microorganisms in there and, and the bacteria and you don't want that, you want that to survive and do its job in the garden. So it goes under compost, mulch, mix it in a bit of your soil, just so the sun can't get to it. So what I did was, I would be doing this for a couple of hours. Patrick kept me company while we were doing it. We are just sitting out here enjoying the day and I'd just pull it apart like this, go through it, put it in the bucket. Now you can see these little white, white worms. Let's see if I can find a better load. There you go. They're, a com not, they're not the composting worm that I'm wanting to grow and use. They're more just another added cycle to the breaking down and the bacteria and that. If you don't want them in your plant, um, in your farm, sorry, what you do is you put a piece of bread, just any bread, on top, come back in a couple of days, take the bread out, and there'll be lots and lots of white worms connected to it, and they'll be munching away on it. Put it in your compost bin or put it in your green waste bin if you have a green waste bin that leaves the property. I don't give it to the chooks for all the simple reason. I don't know what those worms would do to my chooks in sides and things like that. Though I do worm them. So that's what I do. Then what I've got here is the worms. Now it doesn't look a lot, does it? But if we were to turn it out... And turn it over there you go here's all those beautiful worms isn't that amazing there are all sizes and ages in here and they eat the kitchen scraps I share it out between all of them between the chooks the worms the compost bin the bakashi bin it's not that we make a lot it's the fact that worms get fed weekly so I put their scraps in the freezer and then I just take them out and defrost them or I can put them in frozen if I want chooks get fed daily with any food scraps and what the chooks don't eat goes in the compost so look at this little dude here that's my finger next to him he's only a little baby look there's another one there too so and there's another one there so I'm going to pick these up while I'm picking them up I just want to say to you I'm wearing a glove because I use hand lotions. They have oily hand skin. And I don't know what it'll do in soap, you know. I don't know what it'll do to the little worms. And I'm their employer. And I like to think these little dudes are living in a safe environment. I don't feed them to my chooks or anything like that. They die of old age. So what I'll do is I'll just put the cover back over them. Now, I'm just going to show you my veggie garden. You've probably seen it before if you're regular here. That's it here. From the back veranda where I'm standing doing the worms. And what happens is I use it in there, in the seedlings when I start them off, underneath the mulch. And we get a beautiful harvest of vegetables. It's absolutely fantastic. It's absolutely fantastic. I don't make worm tea with the 
pieces here because when I've looked on YouTube, they use fish aerators and they run it like that. Well, I don't do that. What I do is I use mine differently um, and that's okay. Everybody's got a different way of doing it, different way of harvesting. Some people use a sieve with a four inch square. I don't. I do it this way. I can sit down when I do it. I can walk away and have a cup of coffee. Uh, sorry, I don't drink coffee. A cup of tea or a can of Diet Coke. And then I come back and I just do a bit more. Or I just sit out here and just watch the chalks and the rabbits run around the backyard with Matilda. They're great mates. And then I'll shift more away again. So that's how I do it. Um, I try and do it as gently as possible because I don't want to harm the worms. Now, if you want to go into worm farming and you're not sure, try one of these. A broccoli box. I needed to start a third one, so I'm using a broccoli box. And I'll replace the broccoli box next year with another worm cafe. I like the worm cafe more than the can of worms for lifting the, the trays. So that's what I do. It's a bit sunny, but we do have shade cloth. And in the heat waves, I put towels over them soaked in water and the farms will stay cool here. Around the other side of the house, I had a few accidents where we wound up with worm soup and back when I was first learning how to use worms I would ring my husband in tears and say I've killed all my workers I'm not a very good employer and he'd be trying to work and I'd be crying my eyes out so I've learned it takes, it takes a bit of, bit of time but I've learned how to keep them safe and keep them nice and cool in the summer one very good was it there you go so um that's it for today i hope you enjoyed it and i'll catch you next time